Hello, my dears, Daniela here, and welcome to another episode of the Spa Marketing Made Easy podcast. Now, I've got a question for you, and I want you to tell the truth. Are you someone who's built a habit of eating protein bars for lunch, if you're even eating lunch at all? Now, I realize that we are living in this society of time equals money, and I am totally guilty of wanting to work through lunch or wanting, you know, especially when I was a spa director, it was just like insane. I was lucky if I had 10 minutes to just shove whatever food I could in my mouth as quickly as possible. But the thing is, that is not how you become the best version of yourself. And that is not how you make the best decisions, right? Like if your body is craving fuel, then, and you're just like shoving whatever the closest thing is in, you're not going to be running at your highest level. So to be the best version of ourselves, the one who can consistently show up as a leader, putting herself out there on social media, in our community, the woman who can figure it all out, whatever it takes to make her business dreams a reality if you want to be that woman, if you want to be that version of yourself, you need to be giving yourself the proper fuel to do so. Now, using your brain and building a business, it takes a lot of energy. And in order to make it work, you've got to feed not only your, it's it's multiple aspects, right? So it's your mind, body, and soul. And so we hear about self-care as being a pretty common topic among entrepreneurs. But a lot of times when we think of self-care, we're thinking of meditation or walks on the beach or giving yourself time and space. We're not necessarily talking about the fuel that goes into our body on a regular basis, the actual foods that you're eating to give yourself energy. So Forget about that three o'clock latte. That was like such a habit for me when I was a spa director. I want to talk about breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Now, I know that too many of you are not taking care of yourself at the level that you should be in that arena, which is why I wanted to bring my friend Amanda on the show. So Amanda's a health coach for entrepreneurs, and she has a ton of tips and advice in this area. So let me go ahead and just read her bio really quick, and then we'll jump into the interview so you can hear all the good stuff that she has to say. So Amanda Walker is a health style coach who empowers women to feel amazing naked. She's the creator of the Feel Amazing Naked program and the Feel Amazing Naked podcast. Amanda uses a holistic approach, no BS, to coaching and blend strategy, skill, and mindset to help clients unearth the root causes of their struggles with food, body, and mind to help them create a life they crave. All right, sounds pretty exciting. So keep an open mind. Think about that woman you wanna become, that best version of yourself. And let's go ahead and play that interview. All right, Amanda, welcome to the Spa Marketing Made Easy podcast. I'm so happy to have you on this episode to talk about something a little bit different than we usually talk about on here. I'm super excited to share my passion with your audience, which is slightly different than I've really had the opportunity to talk in front of. So it's mutual. So today, you know, I've been getting a lot of requests from spa owners from estheticians who really want to understand not just like the business side of things, which is what I'm very heavy into teaching systems, processes, you know, we're in the same mastermind. So, you know, I love my trackers and my, yes, (laughs) all of those kind of, I'm grateful that you love those things because I (laughs) learned from you, (laughs) but what you focus on and what you're so good at is just health, overall health. And, and you've built your career as a health coach. And, and I know you focus on some other things in that arena as well, but the core of who you are is healthy mind, body, soul. And so that you can go and do all these other things that you want to do in, in your business, in your world and so on. And something that's been coming up a lot that I've been getting asked a lot of questions from estheticians, from spa owners is like, how do you balance everything? 
how do you balance overwhelm? I'm taking this course. I'm trying to build a spa marketing funnel. I'm trying to see my clients. I'm trying to still be a good mom, like all of these pieces. And we actually did a podcast not too long ago about just how I manage, you know, I opened the door and was like, okay, here's how I do freezer meals. And here's how Mm -hmm. I do all of these different kind of things that I never thought I would talk about. But um, I wanted to bring you on to really continue that conversation of just how important health, overall health, and the fuel that we're giving ourselves is. Because we're not going to be able to show up as the leader that we need to be, as the business owner that we need to be, if we're not giving ourselves that proper proper fuel. Yeah, I 100% agree. And I think that it's an area that's often overlooked in the entrepreneur space because we are so focused on that carrot of money, of product, of um, you know, numbers or what, however you measure success in your business. And oftentimes I think the, the line gets skewed of what is the priority? Why are we doing what we're doing at the end of the day? And it's so very easy how that, like when we're talking about that priority list, how that, that number um, element starts to supersede the self element. And at first we don't necessarily see the consequence of that, but over years that starts to show up in different ways in our lives. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's really common when we talk about self-care, you know, that's kind of like this buzzword is like, you've got to have self-care. You've got to do self-care. Self-care includes eating lunch. Yes. You know, self-care includes like, so often it's like, oh, in our industry, we're like, we, you should get a spa treatment. You should, you know, like make sure that you're making time to go exercise or have a, a glass of wine with your girlfriends or whatever is something that makes you feel balanced but just such an important piece that I know has made a difference for me because I used to be so, so guilty of skipping lunch and not putting healthy foods into my body and not incorporating. I've always put healthy foods into my body, but it was like a, the getting the work done was more important. Yes. And, and so I was eating at different times and I was What's the fastest thing that I can eat? And, you know, I think that part of fuel, I know, I know you have other like fuel givers, but part of fuel is like, how do we choose healthy foods? How do we manage that and manage a proper self-care when we are trying to do 10 million things? Like I know as a mom, and I know you're a mom as well, you know, like, being a mom, being pregnant, you know, like, or having a newborn, it's really hard to make time for yourself to actually have a healthy meal. Yeah. I think too, I mean, before we talk about the how, it's almost talk about the why, because oftentimes what happens as you notice, it's like, okay, I'm more worried about getting the work done. So I sacrifice the fuel and we don't even realize the consequence of how that's reducing our productivity and clouding our brains. And it's such a core part of productivity and just feeling good. It's kind of like, you don't know what you don't know until all of a sudden you start to fuel yourself properly. And and it's like a battle you've been fighting. You've been working against yourself for so long with maybe clouded brain, or you start to notice like my energy levels, you know, are so low. And that's all self-inflicted because we've taken that like a priority and, and dropped it on the list. And so I think it's the understanding of how powerful fuel is, just talking about food and fuel. Um, and I would actually argue rest is right next to it. Food and, and sleep are two of probably the most important things and the self-care practice that I believe um, you know, are worthy of giving attention to. And so when we start to just realize the why underneath and how powerful those simple tweaks can be, um, it has substantial rewards to the money part in our business. So let's talk about sleep. Um, you know, it's it's so interesting because my husband, he like he read this sleep solutions book like a year Mm -hmm. ago. Mm -hmm. Do you know that? I know it. I haven't read it, but I've I've been on parts of interviews and things and I know tidbits of it. Okay. So he got like totally obsessed with this book. He like changed all these things. He bought the the glasses, you know, the Mm -hmm. blue light blocking glasses. He's like 
very, very diligent. He's very into like healthy eating and working out though as well. And so he's, he's up at four 30 every day. He's at the gym at five doing his exercise. He's like, you know, kale is his best friend. So he's, he's very into the healthy living lifestyle, but sleep is massively, massively important. He also has an extremely demanding job. And if he does not get his, he needs eight hours of sleep. That's his number. I know everyone kind of has a different number. He cannot function. And I think that, you know, having it's, it's been really incredible for me to see firsthand how much just his mood, his energy and, and physically how he's changed by having sleep as a, a set, like, this is like a holy ritual for him. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, it's like nine o'clock is bedtime and that's it. Like, yeah, I feel like we'd be good friends because I'm in alignment with him. Um, and I teach, I'm actually, I could even share this graphic with you, but I teach a health sustainability model. And if you would imagine a pyramid, um, like Maslow's, you know, um, Hierarchy of needs. Hierarchy of needs. It's uh, the foundation though. If if you look at the shape, my foundation is mindset and emotional management, um, which is really my focal point as a coach is oftentimes when we start to crave these changes in our lives, what we want to do is change food and change exercise because we've been taught for so long that those are going to move the needle in the direction, you know, the fastest when in actuality is true initially, perhaps, um, But what happens is if we are not meeting the needs underneath it, the more fundamental needs as far as emotion, you know, managing the stress of the day, um, managing the roller coaster of maybe wins and losses in our business that yield behavior patterns like, you know, maybe emotional eating or something. If those things aren't met, then just above that, imagine sleep. That's my second most important piece of the puzzle to help, you know, the clients I work with manage. Because if sleep and rest is not met, you have a few things. You're not able to make decisions throughout the day in your business that are powerful. You're not able to show up and, you know, make meal choices with clarity either because you've probably been in experience me many times it's part of kind of my history is like if i'm exhausted i'm going to have a much harder time choosing you know a chicken breast and broccoli and um potatoes over mcdonald's when i just want to cash out and sleep and so oftentimes we come in at the wrong places to make our behavior our, you know to make changes we desire instead of focusing on two areas that are just so profoundly impactful for sustainable long-term change that's actually going to stick yeah for me what's what's helped so much is actually doing the meal planning because for me, it was the decision process Mm -hmm. because when I come, you know, I work from home and at the end of the day, I leave my office, I go downstairs and I make dinner. And when I do the planning ahead of time, if I have the, what we're making for dinner on the thing, it's not a decision. I've been making decisions all day. I, you know, and if I just see that there, then it's like, okay, that's what we're having for dinner. I'm going to pull that out. And it makes it a much easier choice. If I don't have something on the food plan, I'm like, let's get takeout or let's do, you know, it makes all these other little things just which end up costing more money and are not as nutritious for your body because it's, it's, you know, we were talking about the call before the call being proactive rather than reactive. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, getting takeout or getting fast food is a reactive decision. Mm -hmm. I I think sometimes, I mean, what you're talking about is probably one of the most fundamental skills I teach to my clients, but it's not very sexy, right? Meal planning doesn't feel very sexy. You know, bulk prepping protein doesn't feel very sexy. And so oftentimes when I'm working with someone, they'll say, you know, I used to X, Y, Z, I used to meal prep. I used to plan. It's like, okay, well, what went away? Why did that go away? Because that's really the juicy part of where you need support because it is those most simple, unsexy skill sets that prove the most powerful when it comes to, you know, fueling ourselves. And so I teach the, I call it a grounding day practice where 
I teach my girls to be become so proactive in their life that all the decision making they do is done well before they arrive at the moment the decision needs to be made. And that comes with work. Like my commitment to myself is I don't show up at my computer without 100% clarity of what actions I'm going to be taking. Because if I sit down and try to decide, oh, what am I going to work on today? I've already wasted time, valuable time, time being my most precious resource, just like you when you're a mom running a business. And so we have to treat health the same way. When we pull back and we take create the space for me that Sunday morning. And I look at like, what's really like, what are the non-negotiables in my life that absolutely have to happen? And how am I going to make myself a priority with the time that is more negotiable by deciding then, you know, not only what's for dinner, but, you know, what are going to be the meals I have on hand, you know, for lunch and for breakfast. And that drives the grocery list, right? And when we show up with intention at the grocery list, we save money um, and we bring less junk back into our house isn't going to serve us. But beyond that, we also have the space to create, you know, body movement. And we're able to see objectively um, where we can fit things in, in a reasonable amount of time. So instead of compartmentalizing work over here and health over here, we weave them together seamlessly and all those decisions are made. And when we, we actually get more time in our life and we're actually more free when we create the space to understand, you know, what the week looks like ahead of time. Yeah, I love that. And and something that's just, I don't know if this is affects everyone else or not, but I am someone, I get hangry. Like if I don't have like a meal in me and it's been too long, I will get this like hangry attitude. And if you're seeing clients, you know, and you're in that space where all your, th- your stomach's growling, you're just super hungry. You're not you're not serving those clients at the highest level. Like that for me is something that, you know, when you're in your business, you have to make sure that you are being the best version of yourself. And that goes from, you know, all the, what you're talking about that, how are you showing up at home? How are you being proactive? How are you practicing self-care from, from sleep to meal choices to also just kind of your social needs and balance. Um, But all of those things are going to ultimately play hugely into whatever your goals in your business are. And I think that there's a big disconnect between, because we're such a society of do, 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 rather than you know, it's, it's like, what do I have to do? What do I need to get to this next goal? I need to, you know, create these posts on social media or host this event or do this report or whatever. But you're so right is that you are so much more proactive when you have the right, when you're balanced, when you have Mm -hmm. the right fuel, the right sleep, all of those kind of things. So I was going to say too, what, what comes up when you say that is even deeper than that is an element of walking in alignment um, in your business, like what you're, you're practicing what you preach, right? You're walking the talk. And so I feel like serving a better version of myself as a coach is I can't be on the other end of a coaching call telling my clients one thing, but on the day-to-day not practicing that same thing that I'm sharing. And so I think to truly show up and be authentic in your business is to also model that. I would imagine for your, you know, the audience you speak to is there's an element of like you are, you know, and we've had this conversation before of like, you know, what you put on your skin is, you don't want to, like it's the biggest organ we have, right? We want to put high quality products on our skin and get them from someone who knows how to take care of us. The same thing happens internally. Like we're sabotaging ourselves if we're not doing that same thing on the inside. And I feel like it's such an important piece to address of, you know, we get to show up with you know, more confidence in ourselves as coaches and practitioners when we're doing the things that we're asking of our clients as well. Yeah, I love that. So I think that's a great description of the why, which I'm glad that you brought that up. Let's give a couple of tips for, because I know like I can so relate, especially in the, my first year of motherhood, my daughter, you know, had cow's milk protein and tonic. She had reflux. She wasn't sleeping through the night till she was 14 months. Like my life was completely insane. And if someone told me like, oh, just meal plan, and you'll, I would want to punch them in the face probably. Yeah. So for the, for the people out there that are 
you know, just feeling like this crazy overwhelm, what are some baby steps that they can do to start to make change? Because, I mean, I personally believe you can't just do like a 180 overnight. You've got to like, to be able to make it a habit, you've got to just kind of take baby steps with what works in your life. But I know that you work with a lot of individuals on this process. So I'd love to share some like action items that people Mm -hmm. can start implementing to make change. Yeah, I think, well, you nailed the first one is letting go of the expectation to change all things at once. And so just figuring out, you know, what's out of uh, alignment for you individually is the most important part. And you want to like start there, right? Start with the one thing. And as far as what the one thing is, typically... It's not saying meal planning, but it's carving out an hour of time on a Sunday morning. And I like like sit with a coffee and more importantly, ask your partner, if assuming there is, you know, a mom or a husband um, available to, to, start asking for what you need because that was something that um, I see with most of the women I work with is they already have this servant's you know, attitude that they're already feeling guilty to ask for what they need for one hour of time to really create what they want in the week. So being not afraid, like ask your village to support you from day one and start to, to see what that, like what does the week actually look for? look like for you and get clear. If you're a working mom and you've got a, a let's just say you're going back to that an infant is um, you just need some space to even get a, a, a moment of like, what does this week look like? And how can I start to take, you know, baby steps? And I think that starting with the end in mind is fantastic and starting with the dinner idea and more so even um, like being you know, let go of guilds, use a click list delivery or whatever you have at your, you know, grocery delivery. And it's starting to off level some of those tasks that we should, we feel like we should do, but are not necessary for us to do, especially with all the resources that we have available. And so I think it starts even smaller on a fundamental idea of just releasing the guilt of feeling like to give time for self-care practices is, um, it, you know, allows for guilt and instead realize it helps you show up as a better mom, a better business owner, a better wife. And I wish somebody would have given that, given that memo to me uh, like 10 years ago when I became a mom. Yeah. That was something that, that just came up for me when you were talking about that. I, I'm very much of like, I'm Greek and Italian, right? So the Greeks and Italians, the, the women are very much the ones traditionally that are just taking care of the whole house. And I kind of grew up with that mentality. My mom was a stay at home mom, like always, you know, doing everything and you kind of learn what you see. Right. And so it was really hard for me when I was, when I had gotten married, like I was doing all the laundry, I was doing all the stuff around the house and I'm kind of a control freak. And so I like the towels folded in a certain way. I like the, like in my house, I like everything done a certain way. And I had to get to the place, like even the bed, I was like, I like the bed made this way. I like the Mm. sheets folded this way. Mm -hmm. And I had to be okay with saying, you know what, sweetie, I need you just to help me make the bed Mm -hmm. because it's better to have it made even if it's not my super weirdo controlling way, then it is to just feel so overwhelmed that with the different tasks at hand. And that was a big step for me to be able to like, just say, I need that help to get this done. And I think that that's what really shows like a true partnership is like you as the woman we don't have to do everything. And I know there's men listening here too. We're predominantly women, but I think this is an issue that women struggle with more than men is feeling like they have to have the career, be the perfect mom, be the perfect wife. And it's like, you can't do all of those things. You can't keep the house perfectly clean. You can't have dinner on the table every night at six and like, you know, show up at all the kids games or what, you know, like you just can't do all of those things. You've got to reach out and ask for help and let your partner know like, Hey, this is what I need help with, or this is something that I want to do for our family. 
you know, is Mm -hmm. to make sure that we're all operating at the best version of ourselves. So can you sit down with me for an hour and let's like, let's figure this out together. Yeah. I'm a huge proponent and teach a, the women I work with, some of the women in business that I work with that you have to ask for what you need in life and unapologetically. And the reason I think it's so important as mothers is we teach our children to be advocates for themselves. Then if they're, you know, if they're not asking for what they need or being advocates for themselves, then we're repeating that cycle. And so being, putting yourself in a position that might be uncomfortable at first, to just say, I need support here, or, you know, I am not, you know, I'm not, I'm not getting the support, you know, from your spouse or whoever it is that is needed for me to, you know, to feel like I'm thriving in life, then um, I think it's just like such a powerful place to start and a really simple place to change. And I think more often than not, our spouses are willing to help. They just need to know what they need from us. Yeah. They're not mind readers. Yeah. And I mean, it's, it's like that at home. It's like your employees are not mind readers. Your spouse is not a mind reader. Like, we have to share what we need in order to help us get to that next level. Yeah, I agree. Awesome. Any other tips you want to share? Yeah. So this is a unique perspective, but one of the things that I teach often um, in a skill set that I want all of the girls I work with to to walk away with is becoming so self-aware of your thoughts because it's not the stress and overwhelm of life that actually leaves us feeling stressed. It's the thoughts that we have about our life that leave us feeling stressed and overwhelmed. And so it's even just even deeper is just tuning into them. So if you're feeling overwhelmed or a case of the Mondays, as I call it, which is a theme that and pattern that I deal with and help many of my women with is like, start to get really self-aware of what are those thoughts that are leading you down that path. So it, like, oh my gosh, there's so much on my to-do list, which makes you feel like you're overwhelmed. And when we're overwhelmed, we shut down and we don't, we stop taking action in our life. And so to flip the script on that is like, oh, I'm actually being gifted all this opportunity. And that changes the feeling we feel in our bodies. And when we have feelings that look more like excitement and enthusiasm and hope, then we end up showing in our li- showing up in our lives differently. And so I see this recurring theme out there of I'm so overwhelmed when in actuality, the truth is you're choosing the thoughts that are creating overwhelm. And when you get really crystal clear on like, there's way more power and intention going on in your brain that will shift your the, the needle forward it, there's like a weight that is lifted because you didn't really need any other resources than something you already had inside yourself. Yeah. And, you know, I notice for myself when I get to that overwhelm space, when I'm like, oh my gosh, I have so much to do. I'm never going to be able to get it done. If I actually just write out a list of what I need to do, and some of the things take two minutes and it's like, why did that take me two weeks to get done? Mm -hmm. You know, it's, and then you feel that momentum, right? And that momentum begets subsequent wins. And so sometimes we just have to overcome that analysis paralysis. I love the brain dump. That's like absolutely a tool that um, is powerful. Um, But we start to put in perspective that we were owning a story that wasn't true. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I I think that that's a really great point to kind of leave it for our audience because what I want you all listening to do is to take action, right? So if you want to head over to the Spot Marketing Made Easy Facebook group, if you guys have things that you're struggling with in your personal life that's affecting your business, let us know about it. Let us know how we can help, how we can support you. If you want to do a brain dump, if you want to find an accountability partner in the group, there's so many different options. Like you don't have to do this alone, but just know that if there's so, if whatever's going on in your personal life and in your overall health and self care will affect your business and the goals that you are trying to reach, that is like there is a direct correlation between the two. When you feel good, you show up in a whole different way in your business. You're, you have more confidence. You're able to go after those big dreams. You're able to make decisions in a better way. So this is one of the most valuable pieces of advice that, that I can share with you. Um, so Amanda, tell us where our listeners can find you and follow you if they want to stay in touch. 
Yes. Um, so you can find my podcast, Feel Amazing Naked, on all the podcast platforms. Um, you can also visit feelamazingnaked.com. I have a seven day challenge that just kind of kickstarts the journey, that inward and outward journey that you can um, dive into. And I'm also happy to, happy to provide you a link um, that can help your um, listeners dive into a little deeper understanding of maybe what their number one block is that's holding them back from success um, or feeling amazing naked and kind of get a little bit deeper into some of the mindsets surrounding um, why we get stuck in our health. Perfect. So we'll include all of those links below this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed this episode and I look forward to catching you on the next one. Thanks so much for having me.